Do you want to make $1,000 in dividend income per month? I bet you do. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build up your dividend portfolio, how to find the best dividend stocks, the best dividend ETFs, and how the compounding growth works and how that can all snowball your portfolio like crazy. $1,000 may not sound like a huge amount of money. It doesn't seem like this can change your life. But what if you're going to get this every single month without getting a job, without working nine to five, you can travel all year long, you can spend time with your family, you can do whatever you want and still get paid. How cool is that? The only effort you need to make, the one thing you got to do is learn how dividend investment works and how to apply this snowball dividend growth to your portfolio. If that is something you want to do, make sure you like this video for YouTube algorithm, subscribe to my channel, sit down comfy in your chair and let's go. So in order to start with dividend investing, there are a couple of things you need to understand. There are a couple of charts you need to look at before investing into the stock, dividend stock or dividend ETF. This will allow you to build the best portfolio possible that applies exactly to you and what you can expect from it. Basically, you want to make sure that we buying the right companies with a growth potential, with a dividend growth potential that pay dividends on a regular basis, that can sustain paying these dividends into the future as well. We're going to talk about individual dividend stocks, ETFs. I'm going to break them down. I'm also going to show my portfolio what's happening there. And the best part is we're going to look into the future and see how the growth applied to dividend portfolio on a regular basis. So let's start with stocks, stocks, dividend stocks, and let's actually break them down and find the best ones, what to actually look for, what the metrics we need to see, where are the red flags for those, what stocks I'm looking at and why I'm looking at those, and how to make a decision to pick the best dividend stocks out there. They're gonna pay you dividends consistently throughout the years into the future, and that can help you out to build this dividend portfolio that's gonna bring you thousand dollars per month. Let's now open Yahoo Finance and take a look at an actual example for a dividend stock and what the metrics we need to follow. And what is a good example of a dividend stock on a Canadian stock market? Let's take a look at Bank of Nova Scotia. Ticker symbol is BNS.to. So type into that. We see some metrics here already. And the important part here to look at is couple things. The first one is the forward dividend and yield. So the forward dividend is an actual amount you're going to get paid for holding a single share for a year. So if you hold a single share of Bank of Scotia, you're going to get paid $3.60 per year. They pay dividends on a quarterly basis, so every three months. So if you want to get the actual number you're going to get paid on a quarterly basis, you're going to just get $3.60 divided by 4, which is going to be $0.90 cents per share every single quarter, so every three months. The dividend yield is actually the actual representation of this dividend in percentages. So that's one thing to look at. And 4.6 dividend yield is actually quite high. I'm generally looking at around 2.5 to 5% of dividend yield. If something is above that, I'm either trying to dig into that company, understand what's happening there, their financials are on point or not, because they might have some red flags the dividend sustainability can drop significantly. The other metric we want to look, take a look here is the earnings per share. This is representation of how much money they actually earn per, per share. And this number has to be higher than the forward dividend. So the forward dividend is 3.6, the earnings per share is 6.2. So it's actually two times, almost two times higher than the forward dividend, which is good. They have this change left out. They can reinvest back to themselves in order to grow their business, right? So it means that the dividend sustainability is actually on point here. They have a lot of money from their earnings they can use easily to pay out dividends. It means that they can sustain these dividends going forward almost no matter what's happening. Of course, you want to also take a look at other parameters of the stock, what the growth was for this stock for the last month or a year or five years, you know, or since they started trading on the stock exchange. That is also very important to look at. But for dividend sustainability and for a dividend stock, these two metrics, earnings per share and forward dividend and yield, is the most important ones to look at. You can understand easily what's happening with the company from the first look of it, right? Let's take a look at another example of a dividend stock company, which this might have a different number. So for example, 
Canadian Utilities, which is a good dividend stock in general. The ticker symbol is CU.TO. They pay dividends for a long time already. They show the sustainability of their dividends for long term. And if you look at their metrics, you can see that their forward dividend is 1.76 and their earnings per share is 1.01. .01. It means that they're actually earning less that they can pay out in dividends, which is not a good sign because they're using money they saved up to pay out the dividends. And if it wasn't the Canadian Utilities Company, which paid dividends for a long time already, so they basically cannot just stop doing it, as the investors might not gonna like it. But if the number is gonna go even lower, they might not have another choice as just cut their dividends, right? So this is very important to look at. And this is one of the metrics you got to check out when you're looking for a dividend stock company. ETFs work a little bit different than stocks because ETF is just a basket of a lot of stocks. So it's a very good way to actually diversify your portfolio and to make sure it can survive any sort of different market downturns or when the companies actually collapse. For example, of 100 stocks in your ETF, say one company is actually just going bankrupt and you lost it and if you have that company then you're sort of not in the best situation right now right but if you're holding an etf that holds these hundreds of companies and one company is gonna go out for whatever reason then you still have this 99 companies holding and your portfolio is still on track of course you're gonna dip a little bit but you're still gonna be in a good shape going forward personally i have around 25 percent of my investments allocated to etfs and that is what I'm planning to do going in the future as well, to have around 20-25% allocated to ETFs so I have this diversification from start. When choosing a dividend ETF and specifically pursuing a goal of getting paid $1,000 in dividends per month, there are a couple other metrics you actually need to worry about when you're doing that. Now going back to Yahoo Finance, let's take a look at one of the largest actually holdings in my portfolio, which is going to be SPHD ETF on the US stock market. Let's type it in, SPHD. So this ETF is actually holds or tracks index that represents the best high dividend companies on the SAP 500 index. So the best high dividend stocks out of the best 500 companies on the US stock market. So that's something, right? A really good ETF to hold for getting dividends. And the things you wanna take a look here is two major metrics. The very first one is going to be expense ratio or mare or fee or management expense ratio and all that. So this represents actually the amount of money you got to pay for holding this ETF. For SPHD, it has a 0.30%. That means on a yearly basis, you're going to pay 0.30% as a fee for holding the CTF. Why? Because the CTF actually rebalances the stock they hold, they track the index, they do some work on top of it and all that. So that's why they charge a lot of money for doing all that work. And you are not necessarily need to pay this fee out of pocket or as a transaction. The fee is actually included into the price of the ETF. And it's hidden from you, you don't actually see it. And how it's actually calculated. For example, if you own $1,000 of this ETF in your portfolio, that the calculation is going to be you get thousand dollars multiplied by 0 0.30 per year you're going to be paying three dollars in terms of fees for the ctf and it's actually pretty cheap if you compare it to mutual funds or other active etfs or even other passively managed etfs right but it's still on the higher side to some other ETFs out there. Personally, I'm looking at the ETFs where the mare is lower than 0.60 or 0.70%, and the SPHD is right in the middle of that, but it's still on the higher side because you can find dividend ETFs where the mare is at 0.11% or 0.06% even, which is very low even for passively managed ETF in general. The other metric for the dividend ETF you need to look at is yield, which is Pretty important because this is actually represents the actual dividend you're going to be getting from this ETF. And for SPHD, it's at 3.86%, which is pretty high for an ETF. I like it because, you know, the ETF in the first place holds a ton of stocks in it. So you're diversified from get-go and getting this high yield from an ETF is actually pretty good. Again, if the yield goes above 5% for an ETF, you got to do your own research, understand what's happening there. If there's any shadiness with this company, 
if they can sustain this dividend yield or not. Now let's take a look at the other example of a great dividend DF now on the Canadian stock market, which is XDIV. This is one of my favorite dividend ETFs on a Toronto Stock Exchange, and there are a couple of reasons for that. The first one is their mare is pretty low. And this ETF is provided by BlackRock. If you go to their website, you can find it easily there, and you can find all the details that you need and you want to look at for an ETF. If you scroll down to their mare, to their fee section, you can see that their mare expense ratio is at 0.11%. So this is almost three times lower than for SPHG. So this is one, it's a very low fee dividend ETF, which is great. The other parameter I'm also looking at here is yield. And the yield is represented under portfolio characteristics. You can see the distribution yield for this ETF is at 3.94%, which is pretty good. It's higher than for SPHG, for example. And it's also within our you know, limits for a good generous dividend yield for an ETF. This ETF is also getting some traction and becoming more and more popular over the last like year or two because of its lower mare and pretty high dividend and sustainable dividend yield over the last two years. Lastly, and also very important for dividend ETF or dividend stock, you gotta check out the dividend history. This is the only metric you can take a look to actually predict the future for this stock or for this ETF. You can just, you know, look into the future and see what's gonna happen. The only and the best way to look at at look at the history, that's where you get all these numbers, all this data, that can feed your future predictions. And if the dividend stock or dividend company had some drops or the dividend was cut or they skipped paying dividends for a couple of months in the past, this is comes as a red flag for you. So you gotta check out if this is still a good company, if they change now, they're gonna be paying this consistently or not, or they doing it on a regular basis, right? So do your research to understand if the stock you want to invest into actually paid out dividends every single quarter or every single month. And for SPHD, for example, it's gonna be every single month. I'm enjoying this dividend on a monthly basis. I keep reinvesting all my dividends back to the CTF as well on a monthly basis. Let's keep going. Now we're gonna be taking a look at my portfolio, what's happening there and how you can actually start getting paid these dividends and how to get this 1000 mark per month. Because you're gonna be asking me, okay, I get this mare, I get this yield, now what? I start investing, I get like, you know, $10 a year in dividends. What's happening next? If it's not enough, this is like, this is nothing. I want to get $1,000. What, what should I do? What I'm doing wrong? And you're not doing anything wrong. You just need to keep investing because investments is never, you know, a game of getting rich overnight. Investing is actually a long game. It's time on the market, not time in the market. This is very important to understand. It's always a long game but it can snowball very fast for you. you. Cannot even stop that snowball. It's gonna keep rolling, keep getting bigger and bigger over time. And right now I wanna share with you the power of compounding growth and how you can get from nothing to getting paid thousand dollars in dividends per month. The key part of getting to a certain dividend income is actually to start today. If you haven't started investing, this is the time. Drop everything, go there, start your dividend investing, up and up, quest trade, well, simple. I actually dropped a couple links below in the description. You can go check this out. You can get some free cash that you can start investing with. And that's going to be the start, right? It's absolutely free to invest with well, simple or quest trade. You just need to start. And if you like some other brokerage, go for it, find it and start it. Start with as little as 10, 20, $30 and the snowball effect is gonna hit you very hard. So say you started up your dividend portfolio, you start investing, you bought some stocks or ETFs, you, you're looking for a tracker or you want to see what is happening with your dividends, how much you're getting paid now every month or every quarter. The tool I'm using right now is trackyourdividends.com. This is a very easy tool to use. You can very easily to load up your portfolio in there and see what is happening, what stocks you own and all that, what is, the dividends you're going to be getting paid next month or in a year and stuff like that. First, looking at the dashboard, you can see that it tells you the entire dividend yield for your portfolio, for all the stocks you're holding in your portfolio. For my portfolio, for example, the average dividend yield or the actual dividend yield right now is at 4.16%. I'm trying to get my portfolio to around 35 45 
for dividend yield, which is still on target right now. Now, if you go to the future value section here, that's where we can see what's going to happen with our portfolio in 10, 20, 25 years and how it's going to change. The default parameters tells you what's going to happen with your portfolio in 10 years. Now, let's take a look at numbers here. So the starting annual income right now is at $5,800 per year. That's today. That's still pretty cool. It's not, you know, $1,000 a month yet, but I'm working on that. The next number here is the ending annual income. So what's going to happen with my portfolio in 10 years and how much money is going to generate me per year in dividends. It tells me there's going to be $18,440 a year in dividends in 10 years. And it's actually insanely good because you know why? Because this is what's going to happen if I'm going to stop investing right now. I'm not going to put a dollar to my portfolio starting today. It's just going to stay there on autopilot. Nobody's going to touch it. The only thing that is accounted for this calculation is dividend reinvestments. It means all the dividends you are getting paid throughout these years are going to be reinvested back to the same stocks. And the second point is going to account it here is the share price appreciation. Of course, the stock market is growing, the share price for all the stock is growing as well. Your portfolio is growing on its own without any sort of effort from your side. And that's only 10 years. So if you go and look at 25 years from now, what are we going to see here? You will see that the ending annual income in 25 years, again, without any sort of effort on my side, I'm going to just stop investing today, is going to be at $133,000 a year in dividends alone. This is crazy. That brings us to around $11,000 in dividends per month. And this is beyond all the predictions I could have made. So this is all the numbers. I'm not telling you this because I think this is going to happen. This is the data that tells me this is my going to happen if your portfolio is going to stay at this point and stock market is going to be growing with its historical levels as it to be growing before for the last 100 years. And now you're going to be asking me, okay, this is going to be in 25 years, which is so far into the future, I'm going to be super old by that time. And you're right. But you know what? This is without doing any work. It's going to be just there doing all its work for me. But I'm going to be investing. I'm going to be investing everything I have, all the money, all the spare change, every, everything is going to go into my dividend portfolio. And there is a way to also calculate that in this tool. If you scroll down, there is a number, annual contributions. So right now, my current goal is to contribute around $36,000 a year. So let's put this number in here and update the chart. And this is just going to blow your mind, blow my mind. You know, in 25 years, my annual dividend income is going to be around $465,000. Crazy. This is 25 years from now, which is pretty cool. Now, if you go just 10 years from now, so this is a more realistic number. And we see that my annual dividend income is going to be at $45,000, which is Good. Almost can sustain my lifestyle today. I can start living off my dividends at that point. This is how you can snowball your portfolio. This is how you can actually build up your wealth. The only thing you need to do is open up your brokerage account and contribute as much as possible from every paycheck you get. Just let it go to your dividend portfolio and let it build it up. The earlier you start, the faster you're going to reach your goal. And here's a couple other dividend related videos that you might want to check out with the best dividend stocks, the best dividend ETFs. Keep investing, smash the like, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you around. Cheers. Bye.